This is the Nexus Special, episode 56, made by Google Event 2017, on October 5th, 2017. And now, with all the fun, but no Lego pieces to step on. This Nexus Special is hosted by Ian R. Buck and Ryan Rampersad. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns56. Hey, Ryan. Hi. So, oh, right, big week? Huge week. Huge week. I love it when we have a Nexus special coming up. Oh. We've got these big keynote events that we don't forget about on no, the day of. No, right? it totally happened. I mean, I knew about it, and then I got busy, and I forgot about it completely. Busy. Oh, that's such a joke. <laughs> no. I mean, I got pretty lucky because the... The event started literally like 10 minutes before my last class ended, so I just uh, I just started ignoring my students 10 minutes before they left. It was great. That's fine. That's <laughs> kind of like all teachers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I just, you know, went to lunch and brought a laptop with me and Perfect. watched it in the staff lounge with Betsy, and it was great. That's too good. Mm-hmm. I was not so lucky. No. So tell me about this event. What was this event? All right. So this is the Made by Google event, uh, the second ever, because last year was the first time that Google like really came out with hardware that is like branded by them and not like technically some of these things are manufactured by other companies, right? But you and know, by technically it means fully. Yeah. Um, but like you know, the whole like design process is like allegedly in Google in house, etc. Well, et well, let's keep telling ourselves that. Yeah. I will continue to be the voice of the truth. (laughs) So they started off talking about, you know, AI especially, of course, because that's like their favorite thing to talk about these days is like, I don't know if they're trying to assure people that like, even if we don't have the best hardware, we still have like the best services available, et cetera, et cetera. Some of their AI stuff is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of it just doesn't matter that much. Uh, Why not? So what, what what AI stuff do you actually end up using a lot? Um, Google Photos, like all the time, all the stuff that it figures out in order so to I sort my photos. I think that's the best case of what's backed by AI or machine learning. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody knows that it is, and I don't think it actually matters. It's well, just a name, nameless, faceless algorithm, and that's it. Right, but that's the whole point of like the whole AI thing is that like it's doing all this stuff for us, right. and you don't have to know, you don't have to think about it, you know? You just use it and it works. And that's that. That one's a good one. What else you got? Um, you know, assistant th- probably. Yeah, I was gonna no. say the voice recognition for the Google Home and the assistant and everything. Barely. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no. Okay, so it's, photos, Google Photos, the best service they offer. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. pretty much. Um, which is why they make it a selling point for their phones now. They is, sure do. You know, yeah. But we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. First, we got to talk about uh, some new features that they introduced for the Google Home. Um, so you can now call with your phone number from the Google Home. With even, my own phone number? Yeah, with your own phone number, even if you're not a Project Fi subscriber or a Google Voice user. Because um, obviously those two groups of people had it first because like Google already has my phone number on file and they're the ones who make all of my calls anyway. So How does it work? How does what work? The How does it use my phone number? So I think you have to like verify your phone number with Google mm-hmm. and then they just like spoof it, you know. Oh, well, that's nice of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like first they make you prove that you have access to that phone number. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um you can also command your Google Home to ring your Android phone um if you, you know, need to find it. Uh if you have an iPhone, it'll just literally call your iPhone. Well, that's so good enough. It, yeah, it can't like force it out of like do not disturb mode or anything like that the right. way that it can with an Android, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, they told us that they that you have some more options for like routines, which are like the shortcuts that you can program in for Google Home. Um, I've never used any of these routines, so I don't really know what's what's possible now and what's going to be possible with these new changes. They kind of glossed over that, so we're gonna gloss over it too. Perfect. I love yeah. doing that. Um, they talked about how it's going to be able to like more naturally accept commands, like uh, warm up the living room um, instead of like you know you specifically having to tell it like what temperature you want it to be, for example, uh, because like the Google Home can can get what your current settings are and just you know go like okay relative to sixty eight degrees I'm going to turn it up to like seventy two or whatever, um, so that's kind of nice. Here's here's a really funny. 
um feature that I kind of I kind of thought of this kind of thing before um but you can broadcast a message from one Google Home device to all of the other ones that are in a house. So of course they were talking mm. about like in terms of like I'm a parent and I need to get my f- kids to come downstairs but I like don't want to yell up the stairs, you know, you just tell the Google Home to like forward this message to the Google Homes that are upstairs. Or the kids will abuse it. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And that's I wonder if it's it, you can like lock it to only if you recognize my voice as this sure. user kind of thing. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but speaking of families, um, family link accounts are going to be supported on uh, on Google Home. Those are those accounts that like parents can make for their kids when their kids are under 13 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also partnering with like Disney and other kid focused content companies to provide content for the google home to to play with right? are you gonna put more ads in my google home i have no idea hmm. i don't know okay. uh, have you encountered any ads oh that one. Oh yeah that Every, one. yeah what was what was what movie was that was that I, the beauty and the beast something like that yeah i, so. I, I was super weirded out by that yeah huh, oh it was an accident mm-hmm. or so they say sure 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 mm-hmm so that's all software features that are coming to the existing google homes um Ryan, did they announce any more new hardware that's related to Google Homes? They sure did. They released, just like every other vendor who has released anything like this, Mm -hmm. a smaller version. Hang on. Any other vendor? You mean that one vendor, that Amazon company? The one at the top of the list. Yeah. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, so um, it's the Home Mini Mm -hmm. because it's smaller than the regular Google Home. Yep. So And the price is smaller, too. It's only $50 now. Yeah, yeah. Which is a great price. I think that that's for, about the right price for, for this kind of thing. For a normal person, they can just get one. It's kind yeah. of that Chromecast price. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's within Realm just to get one for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a different look now. So instead of being kind of a plasticky thing, mm-hmm. it's more of a fabric-y foam. Yeah, it's pill. definitely it's definitely very similar to like the fabric look that the bottom half right. of the Google Home has. But it's almost more fabricy. Like yeah, I it's, agree. It's almost like a pillow. Mm-hmm. And they talked a lot about this fabric. They were like, we had to go through, like, so much effort to get the colors to look just right and to get the fabric to, like, be, you know, uh, sturdy enough but still, like, let through light and sound. And, like, for example, the chalk color alone took us 157 tries to get right. Like, okay, quit trying to be as pretentious as Johnny Ives. Like, um, so it's annoying. So did you actually get to hear what it sounded like on the stream? It Well, I was listening to it through laptop speakers so it doesn't matter uh, what it sounded it like could, you know could matter uh so the, what i wonder about it is like will it have uh the same capabilities for you know hearing your voice and actually sounding in any way good mm. um because even the current google home doesn't sound that great when it talks mm. it's sort of I don't, I don't think it sounds like it. Are you talking about, like, the the quality of the speakers or, like, the fact that the AI-generated voice doesn't sound natural? Um, I just don't think it sounds particularly good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, for music, I, won't, I wouldn't know. I don't listen to music. <laughs> but for voice stuff, which is what it does, uh-huh. uh, when I ask it for the weather, it mm-hmm. just doesn't sound very good. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't remember you saying that when we reviewed it. But... Yeah, I used it more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but they also released another home product. Yeah, so this one was actually not leaked beforehand, which, which is was surprising. Unusual. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is the Max. Mm-hmm. Google Home Max. <laughs> and this one is definitely aimed at um, the audiophile kind of group, and it's priced as such. It's priced at $400. Um, it's a big, like, rectangular version of the home. Um, they talked about how, of course, it's the best speakers yet that they've come out with in the line. Probably true. Um, they really love bass on this thing, apparently. Uh, and it has a thing called smart sound, which definitely is taking a cues directly from Apple's announcement of the HomePod, right? So it's going to adjust the audio that it's putting out based on what's in its environment, mm-hmm. right? And it actually, like, does this on the fly. It's not like you set it down and then it figures out and then, you know, just keeps those settings forever and ever. Um, it'll actually, like, if you move it, it'll switch the settings uh, within, like, a few seconds of when you move it to a new spot. 
Um, and they talk about how it's also going to be able to learn like kind of patterns over time, you know? So if you always have the volume really low in the morning, it'll start off with volume low in the morning, you know, and, and you won't have to like adjust that yourself every single time. That's nice. What, if it knows that the dishwasher is going because it's got uh, microphones, you know, it'll like adjust its volume up, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I think what we need to talk about is how much it costs. Yeah, sure. Well, actually, can I finish with a couple more things that, sure. that it has to justify um, its cost? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so in, in order to get audio onto this thing, like, as you know, Google homes have previously been able to like push audio that they are playing to other Chromecast speakers and everything, but there was no way to get like audio from any other device onto the Google home other than through casting, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the Google home max supports bluetooth and aux input as well that's nice and uh and it also comes with 12 months free of youtube red seems reasonable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so that helps justify the price so what's yeah. the price four hundred dollars four hundred dollars which is isn't that the same price as the home pod i'm so not sure i believe it's 399 i think that's right either that or 350 i'm also curious about when the home pod is coming out in relation to the to the google well, home max december is what i heard for the home pod mm -hmm. so uh maybe maybe sometime around then i don't know um at least you're getting 12 months of youtube red for free i hope that means that even if you have youtube red they just give you 12 months worth of credit I'm not sure. I they love to do this kind of thing where they're like, "Oh, it's only for new customers." Yeah, but you know? that makes it not worth it at all. Right, I know. So I'd almost buy it just to have to not pay for another hundred and twenty dollars worth of YouTube Red. Mm. Um, and you know, the funny thing is that even for me, that would be useless because I'm not doing it on an individual basis anymore. Right. I've got the family plan, so mm -hmm. like, yeah, that wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't. I wonder. Do people actually use this thing for music? Like, is that really a thing? The home, the Google Home Max. Will Will they actually do that? Like, well, I mean, that's supposedly what it's for, you know. But why? Just save your money. And <laughs> I agree. No, I agree. Like, four hundred dollars is way, way too much for me to ever spend on any speakers. Um, I mean, that's not even a good speaker. Like, real speakers, you would never just buy with some weird. Well, how do you know? You haven't heard it yet. You know, well, I mean, it's not going to be as good as I don't, like like you know, some actual like full sized yeah um, yeah yeah you know bookshelf mo monitors speakers. or whatever they call them right yeah, exactly yeah. okay yeah so the uh, the HomePod I just looked it up is uh, three hundred and fifty dollars that yep. that seems fine mm -hmm. um, what did the Max look like I I don't recall they're they're these kind of rectangles that you can either have uh, horizontally or vertically whatever okay. makes more sense for the space that you're putting them in so it's not um, the pill shape of the little one nope nope um, mm -hmm. and actually the the four little dots the row will uh, orient itself oh, really? uh, according to which direction you have the rectangle oriented that's cool yeah that's a nice little feature. So funny. <laughs> um, they brought Nest on stage to talk a little bit. Um, basically, all they did was like remind us that they just released a bunch of new products, mm -hmm. right? So the uh, what the Nest Hello, uh, is that which what it's is called? yeah, the it's it's their their little uh, doorbell thing with a camera. Um, Hello. They've got some new like security cameras. They've got I don't know what else, um, a pin pad or something probably stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but they did talk about how uh, the Nest products are integrating with other Google products that you place in your home. And these things seemed pretty cool. Um, so the Nest Cam can now like send its feed to a Chromecast device, right? Um, and they, of course, demonstrated it by having the person on stage like ask Google Home, mm. show me what's in my front hall. And then the, the feed from the front hall appeared on their TV. Um, the, the Nest Hello can announce through google home devices who is at the door if it recognizes them right that's so. kind of fun that's kind of cool i like that yeah but how much does all of this nonsense cost oh you know we'd have to go back to like the nest um launch event to look not, at all that not stuff even not even impressed so, yeah it just does not matter <laughs> now would you be impressed by <laughs> a pixel book no <laughs> <laughs> oh wait no let me say yes if it's Starting price is four hundred dollars. Mm, yeah. Oh, you're talking about the Samsung Chromebook. Plus. I'm just talking about yeah. the obvious price point for Chromebooks, <laughs> actually. Yeah. 
Now, the thing about the $400 price point for the Samsung one that launched earlier this year is uh, when I told my parents, they, they asked me like, hey, what Chromebook should we get my brother for his birthday? Because mm-hmm. he's asking for a Chromebook. And I told them the Samsung Chromebook Plus. And they saw that it was $450. And they were like, what? And I was like, are you, come on, you guys. Just, you know, everything. So, so because I, I work now and it's just like, oh, whatever, 10 minutes by phone. Um Everything is price creeped way up. Now, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's different. Uh-huh. I understand that normal people can't do that, and they don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So the Pixel Pixelbook. Book. Pixel Book, though. Uh, this is a Chromebook that's branded as Pixel, um, and actually has a lot of like the Pixel kind of aesthetic, right? So it's got like kind of the glass uh, upper third, and then like you know the aluminum mm-hmm. body below that kind of thing. Um, starting at a thousand dollars. So actually, the the price that was leaked ahead of this event was a little bit off. They thought that it was going to be twelve hundred dollars, but uh, I but think there is a twelve hundred dollar option. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. I mean, there's there's uh you can you can spec it out uh based on what like processor and how much RAM you put in it and probably how much storage as well. Uh, anywhere from a thousand dollars to I think sixteen hundred or seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Um, all right. So, but let's talk about the, the hardware itself, the design of it. So it's 10 millimeters thick. Uh, it's one kilogram. It's got a 12.3 inch screen. I didn't look at what resolution it was, but I'm sure that it's insane because the Chromebook pixels have traditionally had very, uh, very high resolutions. Yeah. It gets 10 hours of battery life. Um, and if you charge it for 15 minutes, then you'll have like two hours of, uh, of, of battery life off of that. Um, they're introducing instant tethering um, for, I think, I'm not sure if you have to have a Pixel phone or if it's any Android phone. I'm guessing it's Pixel only. Okay. At least initially. Yeah, probably. Um, so where where you can just like immediately choose your phone as your Wi-Fi hotspot without having to go to your phone and like set up the Wi-Fi hotspot, etc. Um, this is the first laptop that has the Google Assistant built in. Ooh. <sighs> Yeah, so that was a a big theme of the announcement yesterday was that I think Google thinks that people love their Google Assistant way more than people actually do. Well, that's my reaction to AI and machine learning. Like, <laughs> yeah, people, exactly. People don't care. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I was I was perfectly happy with Google when it was just like Google Now, yeah. you know, and it was like I I mean I talk to it, I give it voice commands, it comes back to me with with answers. Like I didn't I didn't need this whole like you know branding everything as mm-hmm. you know etc hello um but it does it, it has a dedicated button for the google assistant right there on the keyboard like where the windows key would normally be in between like really? the control and the alt yep so like yep. the bigsby button probably oh yeah that, well, i need to see a picture of this now <laughs> that is horrible um also uh, since it's a chromebook the caps lock key is uh not really the caps lock key it's it's you know the the key that opens up like your search, uh, right? your all apps and search i i think that's window. a wonderful yeah. feature mm-hmm. i have no problems with yeah. that yeah yeah but I do have a problem with the super secret button of doom. <laughs> and I suspect, of course, that it's not going to be remappable unless... Um, I mean, this... So, given the hardware that they've got in this thing, I'm sure that you'll be able to, like, wipe Chrome OS if you want and install, like, you know, Windows or Linux or whatever you want on it. Well, it's like a crazy and, Linux, at least. <laughs> and, you know, but I've never done it, so I don't know for sure how, like, easy that would be and how, like, much support you would get for the hardware. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's all fairly standard Intel processors and, you know, RAM and everything. Whoa, so. Intel processors, that means it's good? Mm-hmm. <gasps> mm-hmm. And I mean, that's what Chromebook Pixels have always had is, mm. you know, the Intel i5s on up to the i7s. Let's see yeah. if, if I click this i7 here, will it tell me? No, it won't tell me the model of the i7. Mm. It could still be a dual core, which means it's useless. True. Wait, they make i7s that are dual cores on laptops? Sure oh, do. Oh, come on, Intel. No. Come on, people who think they're getting something good. Um, They also have a pen that you can get. What's it called? Called the Pixel Pen. <laughs> Pixel Pen. <laughs> Pixels everything now. I guess. Um, it doesn't come with the laptop. It doesn't have a slot that it goes into on the laptop. How much is the pen? It costs a hundred dollars. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, oof. if you really want this to be a feature that like your laptop is known for, it's got to come with the laptop. But you know what the, I mean? Does the pen come with the uh, surface? Yes. Does the pen mm-hmm. come with the iPad Pro? No. Hmm. But I would argue that people don't know the iPad Pro for the pen. I'm Actually, just... I, don't, I would argue that people don't know the iPad Pro in general. I have I have seen 
uh, like a total of two of them in the wild, and one of them was an Apple employee. Well, I, so that I, doesn't I, count. No, that does not count. But I guess I argue that people don't actually use iPads either. You so know, I mean, I don't know the like people know the Samsung Note series for the pens, right? People know. Well, I mean, no, nope, nobody knows that the Samsung the Samsung Chromebook Plus comes with a pen, right? So yeah. it's like a central part of the whole you know experience. Um, I don't know. Like it's a it's a it's kind of a hit or miss kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the Pixel Pen does have a few kind of nifty features that it can do. So, like, if you circle something on the screen with the pen, then the assistant will pull up information about that specific thing. So it's, like, kind of one last step for you to go through besides, like, taking a screenshot of it and then telling it, like, this is exactly what I want to know about. Um, I don't know why you can't just do that with your finger. Because that'd be too easy. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, they're, they're talking a lot about like, uh, how pressure sensitive it is and like mm-hmm. angles and stuff. I did hear that it has, um, 10 millisecond, uh, responsiveness. Yes. Which is cut in half from the, um, the Surface Pro pens. Oh, wow. Okay. 20, 20 millisecond. Um, but the screen refresh rate is still 16 milliseconds. Hmm. So. Huh. You know. That's okay. So you can draw faster than you can see it, which is cool, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. 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 They also, of course, talked about Google Play, um, which is, uh, you know, now available on Chromebooks for real. It's not like a beta feature anymore. Good. Um, it's the feature that we've all been wanting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And actually, uh, later on, on Second Opinion, when I get my brother on to talk about his uh, Samsung Chromebook Plus, mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll get to hear yeah. more about that and how well it works. Um, they specifically talked about how they are working with Snapchat to make a version of their app for larger screens. That's dumb. I mean, really, I think that Snapchat should uh, focus on making their core app not suck. But um, you know, I would also like to, to to mention that Snapchat users should just use Twitter. Um, <laughs> can we talk about the price now? Sure. So sure. it's a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars entry price. Yeah. And if you click on their website, you can find out that the highest spec configuration is six hundred and fifty dollars more than that. Yeah. So. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. And you're probably, I don't, I don't know for sure, you're probably not even getting a quad-core i7. It's probably a dual-core. Yeah, so um, they did mention, I think, on the Verge's initial impressions of it, it doesn't have a fan at all. So It's got to be th- dual-core They're then. probably, yeah, like underclocking or otherwise having rather low-powered Intel stuff. In I mean, there. it looks really nice, mm-hmm. um, and I I feel like somebody could be happy with it. I don't know what I would do with a thousand dollar laptop that can't do anything. Though. Well, so here's the thing: if I were to, if we, if I were to get this thing, I would definitely be installing Windows on it, and well, it's would, like and, crazy, and here. that means that I would need to be looking into how viable an option that is it's before not, not I viable. buy it. Unlikely. you know, you might get away with Linux because that's what Chrome OS is. Sure, and I remember back in like 2013 or whatever, uh, one of my classmates had a, a Chromebook that he had Crouton on, which was like mm-hmm. a Linux flavor built mm-hmm. for Chromebooks. And I, you know, I don't know exactly what the limitations of that were and everything. But, yeah. Um, no, no, I don't know. Like, I think it's cool, but I wish they would focus on the market that needs leadership, which is the five hundred dollar range. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, and I don't, I don't mind that they're making these like you know big expensive reference models, which is fine. But you need but, to make a range of reference models then. But also, like... also they're like um the marketing that they had, the like advertisements that they had for this thing was definitely just like here's a bunch of normal people using the Chromebook or the Pixel books because they love them, and it's like yeah, but why no, those people wouldn't be buying this at all? No. Yeah, I mean, and it's really hard because the demographic that likes Google stuff is a very technical audience. I mm-hmm. think, like on average, mm-hmm. um, and it's just so hard for me to even consider a Chromebook as a viable computer right for my own use yeah and and it's like it's so tempting because they have a killer feature now which is android apps like natively supported so what i mean in my ideal world what i want is windows with really nice android app support um and i like crushed dreams i haven't tried out like blue stacks or anything like that but i i don't imagine that it's like a super fast and satisfying experience no um but like i said i have not actually tried it out myself so i guess don't bash until you try it maybe uh so that brings us to the uh 
Is, to the best part? Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, well, to I the mean, best part? it was the best part for me because I actually bought one. Hey, <laughs> you don't say. So what did you buy? The Pixel 2. Pixel 2. And what, did you buy anything? I bought a Pixel 2 XL. Whoa. So, Who yeah. Who didn't see that coming? They always <laughs> leave their phones for the last thing because that's what everybody's waiting for, of course. Yep. Um, so... The Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, we're going to start with the stuff that's different about them, and then we're going to finish with the stuff that's the same. Okay, good luck. All right. So the Pixel 2, the regular sized one, it comes in at $650 for a 64 gigabyte storage, uh, $750 for 128 gigabytes of storage. They have three colors, the kind of blue, which as it turns out is a Verizon exclusive. They did not mention that on stage but of course uh, it is it is um just black and clearly white which i you know last year i thought man these are absurd names and this year they're even more absurd no no, no i love them i think they're perfect i mean <laughs> i didn't say that they're not great i say that they're absurd no which is great <laughs> they're not jet back black they're not no. piano black they're not rose gold mm-hmm. they're they're just black they're just kind of yeah yeah just black mm-hmm. kind of blue um so the the pixel 2 is manufactured by htc it has a five inch display at 1920 by 1080 which is like right there for me that's that's exactly what i want uh it has a 2700 milliamp hour battery and the dimensions come into in at uh 145.7 millimeters by 69.7 millimeters by 7.8 millimeters which for reference is almost exactly the same size as my Nexus 5X. So it's going to feel very, very familiar when I hold it in my hands. So is that the whole phone size, or is that just the yes. screen no, size? Th- um, Ryan, tell me, would it make sense to have three different dimensions for the screen? Well, w- yes, it could. No, the, 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 three the, doesn't have, the screen doesn't have thickness, Ryan. The first two numbers are the most important part there. So, like, is the 5X you have going to have a smaller or bigger screen than this? So my 5X, I think, has a 5.2-inch screen. So it's going to get smaller? Yeah, they, yeah so they had a Ew. slight creep from 5 inches on the Nexus 5 up to 5.2 on the Nexus 5X, and uh, now we're at 5 again. Well, yeah. I've been a broken person since the good old days of the Nexus 6. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell me about the uh, big one now. So the Pixel 2 XL comes in at 850 for the 64 gigabyte version, the uh, 950 for the 128 gigabyte version. Um, I believe last year when you went up from in terms of the size, the physical size, it was a hundred and twenty dollar price difference. This year it's a two hundred dollar price difference. Yeah, it's kind of absurd. Yeah, um, it's manufactured by LG. It has a six inch screen at 2880 by 1440 so that's not your standard 16 by 9 no, it's, it's 18 it's now, by 9 yeah or 2 by 1 as i like to say because that's like an actually useful uh not ratio not actually it's actually more useful it's 18 by 9 because but, it's it's in the units of 16 by 9 but people can visualize oh like oh it's twice as tall as it is wide i know what that means you know i'm sure most people visualize a question mark because they don't know how to use <laughs> fractions. Um, so uh, I actually really like that screen resu- or that screen ratio better than sixteen by nine. Okay, is that what the S eight has? Actually, the S eight is eighteen point five by nine. God, that's so weird. Because <laughs> decimals in a ratio, <laughs> um, and it's wonderful. Uh, I, I I can't imagine a phone without it. Um, and I've actually um, put a link in the show notes here um, that um, shows the widths. Um, and heights of the screens relative mm-hmm. to other phones in okay. the um you know in the in the ecosystem right now. Okay. Um. So it's actually really nice to see what those ra- you know ratios and heights and widths look like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So for reference. Okay, but those are all like in in comparison to other phones that literally just came out, which I've not really seen out in the wild. I need comparisons to existing phones that I've seen in the past. I mean, the iPhone 8 is just like the iPhone 7. What's the difference? Uh, okay, sure. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, I mean, they have old phones here too, right? I mean, they have the... Yeah, you're right. They're all new. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have the Moto G X4, 5, 7. Right. Anyway, okay. I think I think the point there is that when you look at the phones here, these two screen sizes, um, the uh, Pixel 2 regular has a screen size that's pretty close to the iPhone 8 size. The iPhone X has an... Uh, I think... Th- it's closer to the iPhone 8 Plus, right? The little the, one. The, no, the little one's 4.7 inches. It's really close, man. 
I can, so, if you yeah. insist. I do insist. And then the iPhone X, which is actually the 10, has a screen size that's very similar to the uh, 2XL. Um, okay. You know, if it, but it, but the 2XL has bezels of doom. Kind mm-hmm. of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, let's talk about those bezels. Okay. So it has very small bezels on the sides, but on the top and the bottom, I mean, they're not huge bezels, uh, but they're, they're there. They're there, yeah. and I don't like it. So, Ryan, let me take you back like a year and a half ago. What would you have said about the bezels on this phone back then? Yeah, whatever. Exactly. But that's the thing. The moment that Samsung released this phone, this Galaxy S8 line, uh-huh. every other phone that has a bezel now is junk. Okay. Like, they won. Everybody else lost. I'm totally okay with having, you know, the fairly large. I I am a little bit bummed that I'm not getting like the the smaller bezels on the top and the bottom. Um, but I definitely prefer having the, like the dual front facing speakers over having a full edge to edge display. I mean, I I like I I like the compromise. If they just wrapped the uh, the edges a little bit more on the, on, the uh, on the XL and on the other one, mm. it would have been perfect mm. i don't mind the the chin and the chin stuff oh okay because um, i think the chin stuff is what most people are complaining about well, especially okay. on the smaller one on the on the regular right pixel 2 it is just an abomination yeah. but it looks like it's about the same size as my nexus 5x though yeah which is not not something that i've ever complained about yeah you know it's a little baby phone it's it's a it's a perfectly regular size <laughs> phone to me uh yeah so can uh, we talk about the battery? Well, hang on. Yeah. So apparently the, the the screen on the XL is actually slightly curved. It is. Yeah. Um, and if you actually watch a bunch of videos about people like reviewing it in the room, uh-huh. you can see the screens like uh, glare occasionally. Oh, okay. And, it's, and it kind of curves and, around. And you can see that where the warps. curve is because of the glare. Uh-huh. Um, and it's really interesting. It, it's it's sort of almost like it has kind of a curved edge. But they didn't make the curve go on the edge. They made the curve go into the bezel blackness. Just, well, okay, so you're talking about the curves that go around the sides. Well, Or are so, you talking about the curve so, that's in the middle? So it almost looks like on the 2XL, mm-hmm. the edge of the phone curves into the black part of the bezel. Yes, it does. Yeah, but, and it's dead. But, they could have moved that curve to the actual edge. So it made it made sense. So when I say that it has a slightly curved display, what I mean is that the the middle of the screen is actually a little bit farther away from you than the that is sides of the display. Who yeah. built these phones? It's such a weird like I think of that as a feature that you might want on a gigantic television that you have in your living room, this right? This cannot be real. These are fake. <laughs> um so now we're going to get reports of uh something bending. Okay. Like Ben Gate, you know? Sure, yeah, sure. Even though it's already bent on purpose. Well, that's what I mean. Like, people are going to realize one day, like, oh, look, it's bent. I must have broken it. Uh, all right, so, so you wanted to talk about that battery? I want to talk about the battery. Mm-hmm. So it's got 3,520 milliamp hours. What about the little one? 2,700. Is that good for you? That's probably fine. What do you have now? I'm not sure. Okay. Let me look it up. I, I, uh, I have a 3,400... In my uh, S8 Plus, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I mean, what really matters is how long it lasts, right. which is like and, not and the 30, something and that the we're thir- going to know. And the 3400 I have lasts me all day. Just no problems. Mm-hmm. Um, unless I do like really heavy Google Maps stuff, but GPS just destroys. Now, you see, my Nexus 5X lasts me all day because I have a 10,000 milliamp hour battery with me in my backpack that's at all cheating. times. cheating. I will so have you know. It's, that's what I do, though. But and it's I, cheating. Um, let's see. 2,700 milliamp hours on the Nexus 5X. Hey. Yeah, so I'm going from the Nexus 5X to the Nexus 5X. With like, an extra $400 with, in it. 200, 250 Yeah, it was it was a $400 phone originally. Well, not even close. And, well, I mean, <sighs> it's it's got an actually, like, premium... Uh, 808. Uh, like, yes, um, Snapdragon in it. and Premium you know, it's, Snapdragon, as if they offer... <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Nobody's going to ever come close to that A11 Bionic. Apple's just taking it all away from us. Well, it's between <laughs> Am- Apple and Samsung here. Nobody else can make a decent phone anymore, it mm. turns out. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about some other stuff. So, their design. Yeah, the... Oh, um, by the way, for the dimensions on the XL, it's going to be almost exactly the same as the dimensions on the original Pixel XL. <sighs> yep, so that's... Nobody likes that phone. I mean, I I am pretty impressed. Like when I held the Pixel XL 
it didn't feel that like it was that much bigger than my Nexus 5X. Um, so the most important part though is that it's going to be um, 18 by 9 instead of this pixel mm-hmm. pixel ones 16 by 9. Right ratio. I don't. I mean, I'm still in the sixteen by nine camp you because will move but, forward. because because I need to be able to experience media like that's actually in a standard aspect ratio. It doesn't matter. You don't even notice when you watch a video or something. Okay. Yeah. Um. So uh, let's talk about the design a little bit. Sure. Um. They have a uh, aluminum like the lower three quarters of yeah. aluminum mm-hmm. and the top part. Just like the good old days of the 6P with the little window. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they kind of have that same pixel-style window up there. Yeah, except that unlike the 6P, it's, like, taller. It's, and it's, it's, and it's, it's not, flat. It's, it's not a not visor. Quite, yeah, and it's not quite as, like, as much of the phone's back as the original Pixel was glass, but it, it's definitely more than the 6P. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's just slightly less because the button, the fingerprint sensor mm-hmm. button thing, is on the metal part, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not on the glass part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I I like that they have like the the kind of color touches on some of the uh color options for the power button, you know? It's orange. It's yeah, I think on the white one it's orange and on the kind of blue one it's like kind of a almost like a salmon like a pinkish color or something mm-hmm. like that. Um just kind of like this nice little accent. Um, of course, the the all black one is all black, and you don't get like different colored uh, power buttons. But you know, I think my favorite color option was the in the XL uh, category. You had the one that was white, and then it's got the black glass on top. Like mm-hmm. that that was a really cool kind of duality there. Yeah, I think it's nice that that design. I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. Nothing to write home about. Now, it's just it just looks fine. Aluminum back. What does that take away from us, Ryan? So I can't put my new phone in my existing wireless charger. Yeah, yeah. And I when so when when Apple announced that they were bringing out wireless charging for their new phones, I was like, okay, yeah, we we've had wireless charging for years now. Have all, you? all of my phones. And then I looked it up, and I was like, wait a minute, the Nexus Five X doesn't have wireless charging. What's going on? No. Um, I think a, the five did. A, yeah, yeah, it totally did. I think the six didn't. Yeah, they kind of abandoned it at some point because people weren't using it. That's people because, weren't asking for but it. But that's because nobody was actually buying any Google phones. Okay. They were buying Samsung phones. Right. And did those all those all had wireless charging? Well, it's gone it come it's come and gone. This does one the does the S eight? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. It's a good phone. You should buy it. And your and your original Pixel didn't have not, wireless no, charging. Not yeah. even close. Um it is a shame, but it does get you like Seven hours of charge with fifteen minutes of charging, right on the wired. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's fine. Well, I'm also looking at wireless charging as like, all right, since since Apple is never going to ditch Lightning, and now that they have adopted wireless charging, this is the only option that we have for like just about everybody, no matter what platform they're on, to be able to charge all their phones using the same solution. Right? Yeah, same interface. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about that even in the slightest. That's that's the world that I strive for, Ryan. So I Doesn't think it's matter. very important. Doesn't bother yeah. me. So in terms of like water resistance, it's IP67 uh, certified. So not waterproof, but it's like splash proof, apparently. What does that mean? I don't know. Like, can you wash it in the sink? Probably. Maybe. I don't. You know, I wouldn't try that. I don't know. Because like, the, that's what you need. Sure. You need to be able yeah. to have it actively get hit by water and not just like, oh, it's okay in the rain if you cover it. Like, yeah. that doesn't mean anything. I think, yeah. So I think it's it's okay if it, as long as it's like not submerged in water. Yeah. I think that's what 67 means. That's not good enough. Yeah. They could have done better. Um, now, they do have OLED displays on both of the phones now, and which means that they can have an always-on display <gasps> and not kill the battery life. Oh, my gosh. So nice. I am so excited, Ryan. This is one of the reasons that I'm excited about g- coming from like the mid-tier priced phones to an actual flagship priced phone. I love how you call that thing a flagship. Yeah, $650. That's what the flagships have always been starting at, right? 
Yeah. That's uh, what they used to start at. Right. And, I, you know, price creep. Price, I'm, the I'm, industry price creep, I'm, Yeah, I'm price creeping from mid-tier to, like, you're just you know, catching up to the mid-range now, Exactly. At where, which means that you have price crept up to whatever you're at these days. Which is like, now the new... Like, 900 whatever dollars. Yeah, it's the new yeah. higher range. Yeah, exactly. So... It's the it's the natural order. It's, it's the worst. Everything thing continues ever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I'm really excited about having an OLED display for the very first time on one of I my phones. I gotta tell you, um, ambient display is amazing, mm-hmm. but it's so much better when it's always on ambient. Oh yeah. yeah, and that's what and that's what these bring. Um, I'm not sure exactly what information is going to be showing on the mm-hmm. always on display. It looked like from the demos, it was just like a clock and then some icons showing you which. Uh, notification or which apps mm-hmm. you had notifications from. I don't think it really showed much information about each one. So my S8 Plus here shows uh-huh. me the time, uh-huh. the date, okay, my name. Well, that's useful. Goodness, free who, advertising. Who am I? Free advertising. Uh, the battery percentage, and then finally the most like I don't know how many, but at least the four most recent notification icons. Okay. So that's pretty good. Okay. I hope that Google was smart enough to do something as useful. Mm-hmm. Um, now one thing that they talked about that I thought was real, rather clever is that, um, it will identify what song is being played without you even asking, and it'll display that on the always on display. So and I love that. by clever, I mean that's sort of just disgusting. Why? I love that. I don't want it to spy on me. It can just sit there and be quiet. Well, you can turn that off if you Good, want to, I'm but going, I'm going to keep it on I'm because turn that's, it off. that's, I, I love that feature. Because I, I'm not immersed in, you know, this like pop culture music uh environment and so like every once in a while if somebody else who's a normal person is actually playing music around me i'm like oh i've never heard this one before what is this oh it's by you know some famous person can't you just take your phone out and use the assistant to find out yes but then everybody knows that i'm doing that and they know that i don't know the song here i can just take a glance at my screen and see what it is without having to like broadcast to the world that i have no idea anything about music but I actually don't know anything about music, and I don't care intentionally, so that I don't have to be embarrassed <laughs> by such a thing. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Um, what an, What is another interesting physical feature? Of this phone? Yes. You can squeeze it. You can squeeze it? Yeah. And it fights back? No, it actually cooperates. It, oh, that's good. Well, kind of. So you can squeeze the size of this phone, and it will open up the Google Assistant. So instead of having to like long press on the home button, it's now... Squeezing the sides. So I, I am super interested in this feature because I want to know the mechanism of detecting a squeeze. Right. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Is it, is it something like that's physical? Like, does the frame have a sensor built into it? I don't know. Or is it like when you squeeze a, a certain predictable, like, acceleration pattern? can be detected mm. like what does that or is it like that your fingers kind of subtly touch the sides of the screen and it can figure it out feel that or i, is, I don't I, know i'm so interested in how it knows that i'm doing it it sounds like the what if squeezing you did it with a glove i would imagine that it still work yeah see we've got so much to find out <laughs> now one thing that i'm really disappointed about here is that it's not a remappable command you can't change it from opening the google assistant to doing anything else which is something that samsung got a lot of flack for for to, um, having a dedicated button g- give me a second i have to go ask ask uh, bigsby if it cares hey bigsby do you care it said no <laughs> um yeah, so I mean, if we, if we don't let Samsung get away with that kind of crap, I don't think we should let Google get away with that kind of crap. It is like a half step better because there isn't like a, a button that's staring me in the face there no, that, you know, d- is, is useless. It's not even a half step. It's it's 99% better. Even well, though you can't remap it, mm-hmm. you can turn it off. Right. Which is at least better. But I'm also, I will, like, if, if I was the kind of person who didn't want to use the Google Assistant, I would always be aware of the fact that my phone has this entire input category that I will never be able to use because Google just made this arbitrary decision to not let it do anything that I want it to do. I'm okay with that as long as I can turn it off. <laughs> Ryan, I think it's so funny how we disagree about so many different things, and yet we're always on the same page. Different different lines on the same page. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So the launcher. Um, Google changes up things in the launcher every year, and they make a big deal about it. Um, this year, they are moving the search bar from the top of the launcher down to the bottom of the launcher. Not a bad idea. Yeah, Seems it's, pretty reasonable. Uh-huh. Um, Ryan, how how... Many times have you ever used the search bar straight from the launcher? Uh, 
Because I, I <laughs> never do that. I don't even... I, what does that even mean? I've never, like, I do you tap on the search bar up there and start typing in a Google query? No, but that's actually really cool. I've never done that. No. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Um, so no, d- what I always do is I always open a Chrome tab uh, to do my searches. Okay. Um, because one of the problems, if you do use that bar thing... Mm-hmm. You don't get that those results in Chrome. You get them in its weird fake browser thing. Right. Yeah. The, the, in in the Google app itself. Yeah. So on this phone that I don't use, I happen to have right now uh, forty three tabs open. <laughs> That's amazing. We'll close those. Yeah. That's cool. Um. I so I never use the search bar from the launcher. But I always open the Google app and then do searches from there. Well, I, I don't. And I, I can't tell you exactly why that's my preferred method. I I might like to be able to see like the Google Now cards that appear below it before doing a Google search. But I don't I don't think that's quite it. I can't tell you exactly why that's my pattern of use. And you know, now that you've told is. me that I don't actually use that bar ever, mm-hmm. I'm just going to go and remove it right because action launch action launch lets you do that so so let's talk about that so they moved the search bar down uh-huh. right uh-huh so, it's, it's so below like the the it, home row the dock that so always stays below there. the dock uh-huh so it's closest to where your fingers could type yep but when you click it it presumably bumps up like probably like everything causes like everything does that when you hit the keyboard mm-hmm. like the screen figures it out and bumps you up yeah so what does that mean? Like, does that mean like the whole screen moves up? Well, no, because I mean, like, if you if you tap on the uh, search bar in the launcher right now, basically everything in the launcher gets covered up by the search results and the search uh, right. suggestions anyway. But now, so I think I think it just moves the search bar all the way from the bottom where it is to the top and it allows you to start typing in it. Whatever, Google. If I, if Google, I remember correctly, Google has no clue what they're doing. Um. So I wonder if, uh, like, if Axe Launch will also add that as an option. Oh, I imagine he will because he's always on, uh, like, on top of uh, copying exactly you, what Google's doing. He should stay on top. I mean, I, well, he's going to let give you the option of whether you want know, it on top or bottom because that's also top like, only a, sta- a staple of Action Launcher is infinite choice. Uh, dual front facing speakers. Yes. Okay then. I'm so ready for that. I um, was I, that was one of the things I was excited about the Nexus 5X because it looks like it has dual front facing speakers and then it didn't and I was so mad. Price cuts mid tier. Um but you know what they don't have? A yeah, headphone jack. Yeah. How yeah. do you feel? Ooh. Um so I I admitted to myself sometime last year that eventually I was going to have to give up my headphone jack. And so I just decided not to make a big issue out of it when I finally did have to get rid of my headphone jack. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm getting rid of my headphone jack. So I've used my headphone jack on my SA Plus Mm -hmm. all of one time with the headphones that it came with when I got it. Okay. And then I unplugged them and lost them, and I've never used it since. So, Ryan, how do you listen to podcast? Oh, right. You've got those Bluetooth thingies, don't you? I mean, I just... Put the phone down and it just talks. I mean, you know. Oh my God! You use the built-in speaker? Yeah, it's fine. Ah, I would never. This this actually has a really good speaker. Um, no problem. And then if I actually am somewhere for some reason, like at work, I would never listen to a podcast at work. I'm working. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I guess if I was somewhere in alone, I could use headphones. Mm-hmm. Um, I have the noise canceling ones. I have the little uh, portable ones. Mm-hmm. They're all Bluetooth. It's fine. Yeah, I don't, mean, don't even know. I use I use wired earbuds like all the time, especially like you know I'm whatever when it I'm takes commuting. to get people to stop listening to all that nonsense. To all that nonsense. Yeah. Which nonsense? Music. Oh, okay. Well, you to listen to podcasts, you need speakers as well. You need headphones of some sort. Not worried you know. about it. It's yeah. Um, I am. Like I said in the USB Type C episode of the Extra Dimension, I am worried about the fact that like we're we're getting rid of a universal standard for two competing standards one of which is way more universal than the other but the other one still has a significant market share and so we're going to end up with many many headphones that are incompatible with uh many devices for no particular reason yep. uh other than just siloing yeah i'm actually um Right there with you, um, mm-hmm. but from a little bit more uh, legal-ish standpoint. Okay. So um, what happened with HDMI was that um, they went from VGA, DVI, which were sort of digital, but they were still analog enough so that uh-huh. nobody could 
put DRM in the cables or in the interface. Uh-huh. But with HDMI, they added HDCP, which forces um, some DRM stuff somewhere, somehow. Okay. So if you're actually trying to watch a movie or a video and it has HDCP you know, protection on it, mm-hmm. you can't watch it on something that doesn't support that. Right. Um, so in the future, it's possible that maybe there will be a file format that does the same thing with uh, digital audio. Mm. So you'll only be able to listen to your thingamajig, your song or podcast or, well, probably not a podcast, your song, your mm-hmm. movie, your video on approved expensive headphones or something weird like that. Right. Um, you know, maybe it wouldn't happen because streamers wouldn't want to put additional DRM. I don't know. Like, maybe they do. I don't get it. Um, I don't know. It's a scary thing. Scary thing to consider. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, it's, it's that kind of DRM. Um, I just, I, I think it's a, it's a, a fraught idea because, like, no matter what you're doing, eventually it's going to have to be converted into, analog in order to be like displayed played. or played or you know yeah. um and at that point it can be captured right and you know recorded mm-hmm. and you know pirated so yeah. especially for audio like video is a different story i think right because pixels you can always encode can, like you, digitally you, you can cheat a little bit but audio in order to play it it has to get changed into a different format there is mm-hmm. there is no choice mm-hmm. yeah um so yeah i've kind of I've already been looking around at like, oh, maybe I should get uh, some sort of thing that splits from uh, male USB C to female USB C and a headphone jack, mm-hmm. right? You know, I so think, that I can charge yeah. while. I haven't listening. seen anything like that. Does that exist? Yes, it does. That's it definitely nice. does. Um, of course, like finding ones that are actually of good quality mm. is kind of iffy, uh, especially on one? Amazon right now. No, um, and. And, like, I was looking around on, like, Anchor's website, my favorite peripheral maker. Yeah, they're really good. And uh, they don't have any, like, headphone uh, accessories yet. Um, but, yeah, it, it, I think it's only a matter of time before, like, actual reputable brands start making that kind of thing. Hopefully, um, I don't, I don't know. It's, yeah. This is tough. Oh, actually, no, yeah, uh, Google does sell some of those on their on their site for, like, 45 bucks or something like that, which is, like, ridiculous. Robbery. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so your your very expensive phone, which is now mid tier, uh, also costs more because it just does. Don't, right. don't you love the new yeah. industry? Like, what happened here? On the other hand, on the other hand, I am looking forward to the fact that like any accessories that I get of that type will also work with like the next laptop that I buy because I'm that's true. Uh, you know, I'm only going to be buying a laptop if it has USB Type C uh, heavily supported. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So yeah, they didn't mention the headphone jack in the in the uh, the presentation. Of course, they no. also didn't mention that it w- was missing wireless charging because no. you know why would you call it, talk about your own shortcomings? Um, they did talk about a few more things with like the assistant. Um, so like it, you can customize routines to have like more uh, actions. Um, Let's try this. Okay, Google. Wow, the Pixel One that I haven't used in years worked. <laughs> yeah. This um, S8 Plus is allegedly supposed to be able to do it. Never oh. does. Hmm. Ever. Hmm. Well. Okay, move on. Definitely sticking with the Pixel. Um, Google Lens is actually going to finally come out now. So if you'll recall, that was the rebranded Google Goggles that they announced, I think, back at I.O. this year. Um, it's going to be on Pixel phones first. Um, so I, I guess we're probably going to be kind of like a beta program for Google to test all this out before they make it available wider on Android. Um, and they have to make this available across Android because otherwise, like that, that's not, that wouldn't be an acceptable. But thing. maybe it could be exclusive for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So Google Lens is going to be available in places like, you know, you pull up the assistant and you can ask the assistant, like, what am I looking at? Um, you can take a look. Uh, I think through the camera app itself will have like a lens a button, button at least. Yeah. And also Google Photos will have one for like pictures that you already took. You can you can so lens them. On the S eight plus, which is my favorite phone, mm-hmm. um, there is a Bigsby button. Mm-hmm. It's this weird little like it's like an eye, but it has some like eyelashes on the bottom and top. Hmm. That oh. doesn't you know that that doesn't mean Bixby to me. Uh, no. And, and why isn't the, the Bixby logo? You know, like why isn't it a B or something? Yeah, right. right? reasons um and and i can't use it because i don't have a samsung account right 
Um, and it is great. It's a wonderful feature. Totally recommended that everybody have a useless button in their camera app. Um, so one of the things, um, so I actually work for a living, uh, in a technology setting and we desperately need QR code support here in America. Yeah, right. Um, and so the, um, wonderful people over at Apple actually decided to be innovative and they put, by default, the ability to scan QR codes directly into the camera app. You don't have to buy anything. That's the way it should be. You don't be. have to do any nonsense. You don't have to log into anything. You scan a QR code and it bloops and it shows you whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know if Google Lens has QR support? You know, it had better. Because if it doesn't, better. it's dead on arrival. Right, yeah. But it won't be, actually. Um, so that reason for Apple doing that was probably driven by Chinese use. Okay. Because in China, QR codes are everywhere. Mm. To buy anything, basically, you scan a QR code. Mm. With your phone, anyway. Right. So they, they, very mu- they very much use QR over NFC. Yeah, and QR codes are are used uh, a fair amount in my school, you know. Um, and so, of course, As they should be. And, and so, of course, like in the uh, self service app, which is where all the students have to go to like actually install apps on their iPads. They um, scan a QR they, code. They have no. There, there is oh. a QR code scanner in. Oh, in it. In self service, cool. yeah, that everybody installs. Okay, so. well, we'll find out. Maybe we can have a, a an augmented reality QR code. Mm. You scan the virtual code. <laughs> so speaking of augmented reality, they uh, brought up AR Core again. Um, right. So this is uh, this is where they were talking about how um, you know you can play with virtual items and in, in like overlaid on the real world. Um, I think they they brought up a few like kind of brands like Lego. Uh, specifically, they said all the fun, but uh, no Lego pieces to step on. Um, and then they also had something called AR stickers, which is, uh, going to be exclusive to Pixel phones. Um, which is like kind of you, you, uh, you plop this like character down into whatever you're pointing the camera at, and then it will like act and like kind of interact with the objects around it a little bit, and then you can like take pictures, uh, while it's doing that. So. Not impressed. It's yeah. I, that's not a thing that I can imagine using very often. It's just like those weird Snapchat ears, and or like those, Mitomo. I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> um. So the um the camera the camera score, the camera score yeah. So this is one of the things that I didn't read about before I bought it, but I did after to make mm-hmm. it more justifiable. So okay, so let's bring us back to last year. Google made a huge deal out of the fact that they... This one random website yeah. gave them a high score. Well, so, I mean, apparently that the DxO mark is, like, a reputable, well-known... Except uh, if you read it, the Android Reddit, uh-huh. they hate these people. Oh, really? Why well, do they hate them? Because they gave some iPhone a good score or something. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, don't listen to the Android Reddit people. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, so I was really curious to know, like, what's Google going to do if DxO Mark doesn't give them a great score Can this year? Thing. You know, like, are they going to just not mention it the way that they didn't mention the uh, headphone yeah. jack? And the, you know, um, but no. Uh, luckily for Google, DxO Mark gave them a score of ninety-eight out of a hundred, which is the highest uh, that a cell phone has ever gotten. Once again, so I I don't understand how they do these scores like they have to be based on the most high recent score that's the only way like of course all the phones are going to improve year over year Mm -hmm. there's no choice they have to be they have to come up with a better scoring method i don't know they're going to have to break 100 eventually I don't know. Like, yeah, it is is one hundred out of one hundred like based because because the like as they break down the score uh, in the article, you know, they have like very very specific things about like you know we took these pictures in a controlled environment. Sure. It had this much like chromatic aberration. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm making up terms. Yeah, no, that's know? a real thing. But they actually, you know, they know what they're talking about supposedly. Yeah, but it and, can't. It, you, one ninety eight is two away from a hundred. What do I have right. to, What do I have to do to get a hundred? I don't and then know. What can be better? Do you have to like stick a human eyeball onto the phone and there well, you go? It can't it's be. like, <laughs> it's impossible. So, uh, that's a really cool score and I'm really pleased. Um, I will have the new phone. Also, it's nice to note that the camera is the same on both phones. Um, and yep. the processors mm-hmm. are the same on both phones, yep. which means that won't make a difference when taking the picture. The only thing that'll be different visually is the screen that you look at it mm-hmm. on. So it's possible that on the smaller screen, it might look a little different than on the bigger screen. Yeah. You won't even notice, though. Yeah. And finally, for those of us who buy 
Pixel 2s and Pixel 2s XLs uh, within, you know, like a reasonably short period of time after they were announced, uh, you get a Google Home Mini for free. Woo! So I'll actually have a second uh, Google Home device in my home now. Yep. My, it's definitely going to go in my bedroom because I need something to just like cast to that's upstairs. Currently, all of my castable things are downstairs. So, yep. Seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. I think it's cool. I I didn't know that when I bought it. There was no ad. There was no like secret wording. Mm-hmm. There was no secret code. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, uh, yeah, they're gonna send us like codes to order Redeem. one for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I later wish on it kind of just came with it, and, like together. That would be nice. Yeah, but no, I'll probably get um two of those little mini deals. Mm. One in every floor, you know. Okay. Yeah, you're fu- you're a funny guy. Uh, then they finished off with a few more things. hardware things. Yep. So they briefly talked about the Daydream Viewer. They, uh, they've kind of revamped it a little bit. Um, the new version has like better lenses. It blocks out more light. It's got a strap on top to help it like stay on your head better. Seems reasonable. Yep. Um, kind of iterative, uh, uh improvements. So, so w- did they lower the price at all? I don't think so. I think it's still like 99 bucks. It's or just something a useless, like that. useless thing for a hundred percent of people. Mm. Do you still want yours? Can I have it? I don't even know where it is. <laughs> That's funny. If I help you find it, can I have it? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I don't know where it is. So we were using it at work for a project. Uh-huh. I don't know where I put it. Well, I found its box. Well, I know where the box is. Yeah. Uh, Google Pixel Buds. Here we go. Here's another item that is like taken directly from Apple's announcements last year. But it's worse. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So this is uh, some wireless headphones uh, that have a connection between the two sides. Right. Yeah. It's it's your kind of conventional like Bluetooth earbuds that uh, that connect to each other via a strap that goes around the if back you're of your neck. Copy Google. I mean, if you're going to copy Apple, but then make it a product that's worse, <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah. So these things, uh, these Pixel Buds, are coming out at one hundred and sixty dollars. Also, isn't it ironic that this is a sound thing, but it's called something to do with a Pixel? Uh, is that ironic? Because I mean, the Pixel went from meaning like the Chromebook Pixel to meaning phones but to the meaning Pixel just had about a screen, everything. At least. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I like, and they don't saying. call the Google Homes Pixel Homes. That's true. That's I don't true. know. I, I just I don't, I don't get it. It's well. So I I understand because like you're supposed to pair it with a Google Pixel phone, right? Okay, so I'm supposed so to, it's a, it's I'm a little buddy. To pair my Pixel Book with my Pixel phone. It's a little but yeah, because they got the instant tethering now. Uh. Okay. It's it's a little it, the Pixel Buds are these little buddies for your Pixel phone, no, right? It's, yeah, it's awful. It's great. Um, so when you pair the Pixel Buds with a Pixel phone, you get access to the Google Assistant just by like I think it's long pressing on the right ear. I could just squeeze my phone that's I, in my that's pocket. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> and I mean, um, my my wired headphones that cost me ten dollars, mm-hmm. right? Definitely forward. You know the microphone goes down to my phone yeah and i can just say the hot word and get the google assistant listening to me no problem uh so it's 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 uh trying to solve a problem that nobody had right yeah um now one thing that it does do that's pretty cool is real-time google translations it Uh, is pretty cool yeah so they had a demo on stage of i was totally expecting them to do like english to spanish right because that's like you know your 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 kind of default yeah. language translation here in the u.s what was it? it was english to swedish and i was so ecstatic watching this english swedish. to swedish uh conversation going on well yeah because one of the like the the uh, product head for i think their their home products uh who had been on stage earlier she's swedish so she came okay. back on fair with, enough yeah um so that was like that just made me giddy watching it because i kind of could follow what she was saying <laughs> <laughs> not, not a whole lot but a little bit um, and of course they come with like a, a case that you put the, uh, wireless earbuds in that like can hold up to four battery charges for the earbuds. So you That's get like a good. full 24 hours of, of you know, battery life. I'll uh, last you a week probably. How much do the AirPods cost? 159. 159. Okay. So, so these are right on par with the earbuds. But they're worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. How do you feel about like kind of the look of them with like the braided cable and the like kind of the, so the colors the, that kind of match up perfectly with the uh, with the Google Pixel? Doesn't colors? matter. It doesn't even matter. I don't see them. They're on my head. Yeah, but other people are going to see them on. No, here. they won't. I have a lot of hair. That's oh, that's very true, Ryan. Oh, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, I walk around all the time with my um, bone conduction headphones, mm-hmm. 
nobody can tell that I'm wearing them. Like right. they'll come up to me and I'm like, I can't hear you. Hold on, because I have to figure out how to stop them from talking. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, another thing. The last thing. Yep, yeah, that they talked about, and he actually uh, he almost said one more thing. Oh, that would have been so funny. Such, it, well, that he was definitely referencing that trope, but like not quite but he couldn't saying do it. it because other like people laughed in the crowd, and he just kind of grinned at them, you know. Um, But yeah, so the last thing that they announced was Google Clips, which is this kind of little camera device. It's about the size of a GoPro, but definitely not like the high performance, like strap it to your helmet and, you know, like take it out on the like dirt road with you. Um, So how does it differ from that Nest product that everybody knows about called Dropcam? I had Dropcam. What's Dropcam? I don't remember Dropcam. (laughs) what that's the joke oh okay <laughs> yeah nice okay. um how similar is it because i don't remember drop cam, it's so tell literally me. a camera that you can put wherever you want and it watches stuff for you okay well okay but this one this one i mean what 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 triggers drop cam to start taking pictures or whatever no, no i think it's a streaming stuff Okay, so so Google Clips uh, its intention is for you to like put it down somewhere that's like facing where like you know your group, your your kids and your parents and your pets and whatever are going to be like doing stuff, um, so that it can figure out like when is a good shot. You and know, it just takes it. And it takes it. Yep. And Does it, it, and it store it, it locally? Yes, I think. And I think it kind of like presents them to you on your phone, probably via Google Photos, and then you decide like which, which one, one of these are keepers. Okay, that's um, sort of nice. Yeah, um, and it of course it doesn't just take photos; it also takes videos. So. Okay. So it probably cost 150 bucks, just like the headphones. You know, actually, I don't think that they talked about pricing. What uh, What was the pricing? Um... <laughs> What is it? It is two hundred and forty nine dollars. Oh my gosh, that's for a little camera woof. that does nothing. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny about this actually? I fig I found out about this product before they announced it on stage because like I don't remember why, but I was looking around on the Google store while watching the live stream and I was like, wait, what's this Google Clips thing? So I think it's a it's a it's an adorable little thing. So it has sixteen gigs of storage, mm-hmm. but it only has fifteen frames per second cameraing video wow that's really weird it's really not good um it has gorilla glass 3 because all cameras need to be durable it has a shutter button so that you can be in front of it when you take a picture and it has wi-fi um why does this exist who like who had of 20 percent time oh, but to make ryan this? but ryan but ryan it charges via usb type c that makes it all better um i heard that one of the um either the mini home or the big home does not use type c Ooh. I don't know which one, but one of them. Hmm. Um, so uh, there's another thing I, here on your list. Ooh, actually, you know what? I can't decide which one it's more likely to be. Hmm. I, mean, I would assume it's the big one because it needs more power. Right, but since you can power like a full-size MacBook Pro off of USB Type-C, why couldn't you power a freaking speaker, you know? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you asking? There's another thing here on the list. Do you, yes. Are you going to so, talk about so it? So this is, uh, they didn't announce this during today's event uh, or yesterday's event, but I think it's important to talk about because it's, it's you know, recent news and it's very uh, important for, for Google. Um, so the Moto X4 is not a Google phone. It's by Motorola, uh, which, is, which is not a Google company anymore. Yep, it's owned, owned by Lenovo. Ew. Um. They announced earlier, or last month, uh, that the Moto X4 is going to be coming to Project Phi. They did not just announce it last month. People have known about this for about six months. Okay, sure. Okay, just being clear. But yeah, okay, heavily leaked, but, uh, but they finally, like, you know, announced it last month. Um, which is really, really important because, like, as a $400 phone. It's an entry level phone now. It's, it's the, yeah, the, they now have the mid tier price range covered again on Project Phi which was my big concern Former, formerly mid-tier because i saw that like oh no the nexus 5x and the nexus 6p are you know Gone. rolled out right and it's if it, like they're only coming out with the pixel 2 this year so they're only going to have flagship priced phones on their network that's not a way to run a network so now, to be uh, fair yeah. the pixel 1 is still available for right. purchase but only the Pixel 1 XL is available, and it costs slightly more than the Pixel 2 regular size. Which is fine, because it's still bigger and better, and you should get that no, one instead. No, 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 no. Um, no. Regular so, size. So at least there's sort of a fake umbrella. Kind of, yeah. Also, it's clear why they did that, because HTC doesn't have the manufacturing capacity for more than one phone now. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, and all of HTC's uh, phone people work for Google now. Yeah, so. that's incidental. That yeah. just happened. Um, and, and to kind of encourage people who are on the 5X and the 6P to, uh, you know, switch over, um, they have this trade-in program that actually ends today. So if you're listening to this uh, any time after, like, literally the moment that we published this episode, um, it's too late for you. Um, but they, they were giving uh, $50 of Project Fi credit in addition to the rest of the credit that you get for, for trading in a Nexus 5X or a 6P. Um, which is, uh, honestly, like, a really freaking good deal for, like, the people who entered Project Fi via the two hundred dollar five X deal uh, that that came around like four months after that yeah, phone came out. That was a good deal. Yeah, that was a really good deal. So for those people, they could buy the phone for two hundred dollars like t- a year and a half ago or whatever, and that, and then give it back to Google for one hundred and sixty five dollars. Yeah, seems, yeah, seems like a good plan. Yeah. So, and, and of course that assumes that, um, your Nexus 5X is still working, which is not necessarily an assumption you can make since, you know, it's, uh, has that, that has that fatal flaw. Yep. So, uh, anybody who still has a Nexus 5X, I encourage you to find some way of getting rid of it and getting some money for it so that you can get a different phone because like, or you could just wait for it to like die, but you know, when it dies, don't replace it with another 5X, just get it something else. Definitely. So this is what I always ask uh, at the end of every event show. Mm-hmm. How was this one? So the event itself uh, was not super inspiring. Was um, it better than a blog post? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely was more engaged. Although, I mean, in terms of like the time of my life that I spent watching this thing versus the amount of information that I got out of it, a blog post probably would have been better. Yeah. Kind of what I feel about all events now, actually. <laughs> but that's just because I'm busy. Right. Yeah. Um. I thought it was okay. I, I'm mostly pleased with the products that came with it. Mm-hmm. Um, like the phones could have been a little bit better for their price. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that we got the two homes. Um, would have been nice to see a little bit of a Chromecast refresh kind of thing. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Though, I mean, I, I don't think that the Chromecast 2 necessarily needs a refresh, you know, but I they could just consolidate the line. Like they could just, they don't need an ultra. They don't need a two. They could just have a three, and it does all the stuff. And it could just not suck all the time. I, I wait. Does your Chromecast suck? All of them. Oh, okay. Like yeah. we're going to have to talk about that on a future second opinion, where any, we any, review yeah. the Chromecast anytime. Excellent. Um. So I think it's uh, good overall. Um. In in about a month, you say we'll uh, do a kind of a thing, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So the that'll be like November-ish. Where's my early where's November? My calendar? Yeah. So let's see. I think the twenty eighth is going to be. Uh, a different, uh, probably Android eight, and then two weeks after that is going to be we'll we'll review the so pixels early November, mid November, yep. mm-hmm. something around then. Um, because I'll have my phone and you'll have your phone, um, and we'll all be very excited. Yeah. Yep. And actually, what we're going to start doing is actually reviewing the phones that I buy. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm not letting you get away with like for like two years having... there. I didn't do that. <laughs> there was even the next the the One Plus Three. You recorded an entire review of the phone yeah. and then never published it. Yeah, because it wasn't any good. I was so mad at no, you. No, the Ryan. phone was good. The the episode wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so so we'll be able to do that. And um, you know, this year was not a good year for phones. Like there just weren't that many good ones. Which is a shame because this is the year that I needed to buy a phone because my phone crapped out on me. Well, no, there were good phones that you couldn't buy because they stopped being in mid-range they became entry <laughs> phones yeah uh, yeah that's such an interesting concept we're gonna have to explore that again mm. this the not just the price creep uh on an individual level but like industry-wide price yes. creep yeah. yes yeah very strange it's almost like the the price of phones have inflated which is inflation. like which is like the the exact opposite of what happened like a year and a half ago two years ago where it was like all of a sudden uh the 300 to 400 dollar price range was like just insane with with you know one plus coming into the scene and motorola was making great like 200 to 400 dollar they all did it as a price grab land like market share land Mm -hmm. share and then they abandoned it for some reason yeah i don't know Mm -hmm. we'll see i'm just i'm really really hoping that like having the pixel phone Com- well, combined with the fact that like Android 8 hopefully like abstracts away Android updates from mm-hmm. like driver updates uh, will mean that I will be able to keep this phone. It's not going to die on me physically. It's going to continue to get Android updates and I'll be able to have this thing for like at least three years. 
that's that's my that's my hope here that's your dream and, and I, your dreams will be shattered i will come back to like you the company that made your phone yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you in two years because so far i haven't managed to get more than You're two come years in between back here in a phones. year and be crying and weeping oh no i always your, make it past a year about your mid-range phone <laughs> uh watch me ryan yeah okay me. I'll listen to you at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening to us uh, ramble on about our wonderful Google news, everybody. Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, And of course, on my website, RyanRampersad.com. Excellent. I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck and uh, on IanRBuck.com if you want to see other things that I have made. We, collectively, are The Nexus, and you can find us on Twitter as The Nexus TV. And if you have any, like, feedback for us about this episode, um, go to thenexustv at gmail.com to send us a message. Have a good one. Bye.